obviously our, our, our offense was anemic today. Um, I thought Ohio State had a lot to do with that. You know, I, I thought they uh, imposed their will on the defensive end, especially in the second half. You know, I thought the first half, maybe we you know, we'll watch the film, but didn't take quite as much advantage of the shots that we had in the first half because I thought we executed really well. I thought the ball moved well in the first half. I thought we had some opportunities. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll look at it and feel like we should have been up more than three at the half. Um, you know, and then the second half, you know, it's just that small window, you know, in a low possession game, in a low scoring game, you know, they go on a 10 nothing run from 11 and change to seven and change. It was like over three minutes and 45 seconds. They went on a 10 nothing run. The game goes from a one-point game to an 11-point game in three and a half minutes. And I thought that really affected then how the game was played out at the end. Um, you know, I thought Loving uh, got in there and, and um, you know, scored the bulk of his points certainly during that stretch. I thought he made a real impact on the game at the offensive end as a shot maker. Uh, I thought that was, you know, that was big. Um, you know, I thought that uh, the first half, I thought we played well but didn't necessarily make shots. I thought we defended well. I thought we had great energy. I thought we gave great effort. The second half, I did think I sensed a little bit of discouragement, a little bit with some guys over the offensive end. Some of that's just maturity. Um, you know, they, they climbed into us a little bit at the outset. I thought we'd adjust a little bit better in the second half, but of our 13 turnovers, 10 of them were Ohio State steals. So when you give them live ball turnovers, it gives them a chance to get out and transition. And then once again, in a low-scoring game, you hate to get, you know, give them those. Um, and again, some of them they took from us. You know, on entry passes, thought we could have been a little bit more ball strong. But, you know, all in all, I mean, get, get, give them credit. I mean, they were difficult to score against today. And, um, you know, we got to improve, you know, whether that's taking care of the ball or shot making or our execution. I did think the ball stuck a little bit more in the second half when we were struggling to maybe make a shot or two and we had missed a couple layups. I thought we started to dribble it a little bit too much, maybe like um, rather, rather than move the ball like we did in the first half. Uh, but again, you know, give them credit. You know, their defense has been good all year. And, um, you know, again, I thought that three-and-a-half-minute stretch there when it went from a one-point game to an 11-point game. I really thought that kind of, you know, that, that was a, that was the really critical stretch during the game that got them over the hump. Questions for the players? Curious to talk about early on, the ball movement was really good. You guys were getting open shots. What, what did change in the second half? It seems like that's become kind of a recurring thing. Uh, you know, uh, it was just a matter of us being tough and playing together and, um, you know, Going out, listening to, co to what coach was saying, and just executing. We definitely got to do a better job at that, and uh, mainly just being tough and uh, getting getting the spots where, whenever we want to get to a spot or something like that. You guys talk a lot about Ohio State, how good they are defensively, especially on the perimeter. Uh, what's the difference when you get out there, and how, how tough are those guys really? I mean, it's just a matter of you being tough. <laughs> I mean, I get those guys credit, a little bit of credit. They, they, they play hard and smart. It's just a matter of you being tough, knowing that you're going to get it wherever you want to go. I mean, it was just trying to do you know, what's best for the team, you know, attacking the glass and understanding that, uh, especially on offensive end, trying to get those extra rebounds to help ourselves get extra possessions. And you had a couple of good looks on the mid-range jumpers. Uh, what did you see from that performance? Last few games, not as much. Are you making more of an effort to, to follow the pick, to turn around, to, to back out? I mean, every game is different. You just try to take the shots that are open. Coach, uh, discouragement, just how are you fighting through that? And, you know, how does the team deal with the offense right now? Well, I mean, it just starts with uh, me, Tracy, Joe, and Iki as leaders, you know, to, to lead these guys and, and show them a good example. Anything else for these two? All right. Well, yeah, okay. Questions? Hey, Bob. Was the Loving hadn't made a field goal since January? Yeah, don't remind me. <laughs> I think since we played him. No, at Nebraska. 
That's okay, nice good. Uh, that makes me feel a little better. What, I mean, what was the scouting report? Were you, were you cheating off of him a little? No, he's a shot. No, he's a shot maker. He's more than capable. We we talk more in terms, Bob, of capability. You know, this isn't the NBA playoffs where, like, it's a seven-game series against Ohio State. It's one night, one game. You know, is Mark Loving capable of making shots and scoring offensively? I think certainly you know from, from following the team and watching them play as much or more than I do, I think the answer is yes. I think that's a real strong suit for him. Uh, we lost him on a baseline stagger that really got him going. He made a couple big plays, big shots. You know, either team at that point, Bob was looking for a shot maker to make a difference. And um, so I give him a lot of credit during, you know, during that stretch. Um, after he made the first one, I thought we defended a couple times there really well, and he just made shots. You know, sometimes it's that simple. But sometimes you see the ball go in for the first time maybe. Gives you a little confidence, a little boost. And then, you know, he continued uh, and, and made a couple more after that and then went to the free throw line and made two free throws. John, what, what's, your, what's your best explanation for why uh, some of your guys have trouble finishing? Is it, it, you know, some of the younger ones, is it physical strength? Or, I mean, what do you well, I thought their size had a little bit, and then I think we've got to be tougher, as Tracy said, and we got to finish some of those. I mean, we do. You know, we, we assisted them a little bit. Not only did Loving make shots during that run, 10 nothing run, but we turned it over three times and missed two layups. I mean, can't do that, you know. That's not that's not our the margin for error. you know what I'm getting ready to say you've all been sitting here all year is really small with our team so you can't that that just that three and a half minute stretch there you turn it a couple times a guy like Loving steps up makes a couple shots you know we miss a couple layups the game turns um, you know unfortunately didn't didn't turn in our direction it seemed like you saw a little bit of here we go again maybe body language from some of the guys. Is that something you're... Yeah, that's what I meant by discouragement a little bit. You know, most of it was from our young guys. Our young guys got, you know, they were just okay today. I mean, guys climbed into them and, you know, they got to be a little bit tougher uh, on entry passes and being ball strong and being tough with the ball. Certainly wasn't just them, but, you know, I felt like that they got taken out of it a little bit um, by a couple of their, their guys that went at them from a physical perspective and a ball pressure perspective and we got to be tougher than that as Tracy said and a little bit better than that. Is there a way to fight against that other than just time and maturity for those guys? Mental toughness. You know, you got to be tougher than that. I thought we were pretty good. Jeremy said it, uh, and I, obviously I said it initially even before he did. In the first half, man, we moved the heck out of the ball. I mean, we did. I mean, we missed. Got to make them. You know, we only had five turnovers at halftime. Now again, five of those were steals. That's different from the dead ball turnover where you throw one out of bounds and now you can set your defense. You give Shannon Scott three steals for three laps in the first half in a 23-20 to 20 game, that's a big deal. Um, but, you know, having said that, I thought other than the times where we threw it away, I walked into halftime saying, man, we're getting great shots. We're moving. Thought our attack was much better than game one in Columbus. We were getting, you know, we, we, were, we were moving the ball. I thought it was really good. We were getting exactly what we wanted, and uh, we just didn't make shots in the first half. The second half, I didn't feel so much that way. Thought the ball stuck a little bit. Um, thought our execution wasn't quite as good. And, you know, we weren't quite as good offensively in the second half. But, again, give them credit. They've been good defensively all year. You know, I, I thought the 10 steals, you know, in that in that type of game, that's that's a large number. You know, 13 turnovers, 10, 10 of them were steals by Ohio State. That means a lot of live ball turnover opportunities. Coach, when the ball movement does stop, what, what do you think is the cause of that? Is it combinations you have? Well, I think part of it certainly is their defense. They're good uh, defensively, and they play it that way. They're strategically and philo philosophically set up to limit that uh, in terms of how they play it. So, again, you know, give them some credit. But part of it is we got to impose our will. I mean, you say, well, weren't they playing the same defense in the first half? Yeah. You know, we got to make up our mind that we're going to stick to what we're doing, uh, continue to encourage those guys to move the ball. Uh, I thought we did it better in the first half than we did the second. It can be frustrating, you know, but that doesn't do us any good. So, you know, we better figure it out. Coach, Dan, uh, yeah, he was tremendous. 
He was tremendous. Uh, both games, I think, you know, he was phenomenal defensively on Wednesday night in that game against Nebraska. I thought he was equally as good tonight. He was a big reason our defense was that good in the first half. I thought it was terrific. I thought he was a big part of it. He covered up some sins defensively. He's really smart. He sees things. He anticipates. He can move his feet. He's got great size while he's moving his feet in length. Um, and he's pretty smart. So he, he's, as I said all year, I mean, he's an elite you know, elite level defender. There's not a category for that on the stat sheet, but I mean, it, it's it's a big deal. I mean, the other night, you know, I think we were 32% field goal D in the 30 minutes he played at Nebraska. We were 90% when he was out of the game. So that's how much he impacts the game. You know, we need some of the other guys, obviously, to come along defensively. Some of the younger guys have been saying that. I think they've gotten a little bit better. Tonight, they weren't quite as good. Do you need Ray to be more aggressive? Than maybe he was until no, I thought he was really aggressive in the first half. In fact, I said that to him at halftime. You know, he, he made one out of six, but I thought he had, I thought he was pretty aggressive, much more so than in Columbus uh, in game one. And, um, you know, at some point, like, you know, you start to drive and you feel like the whole, as I said at, at Nebraska, you feel like the whole arena is guarding them. When we kick it to somebody, we got to make a shot. Yeah. He's got to play better. I mean, tonight I, I, he, didn't play, he didn't play real well. Um, you know, Joe knows that. Uh, he can play better, has played better. He needs to He needs to play better. He needs to take care of the ball better. Um, you know, we need, we need him to play better. You know, again, that margin for error, we need everybody hitting on all cylinders. You know, he wasn't the only one tonight, but I think he'd be the first to tell you that, you know, he, he didn't play quite as well as he's capable. Yeah, tip dunks, a couple threes. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm more interested in the quality of the possessions because that's what I can control, you know. Uh, you can't, as my old college coach said, you can't make the free throw for them. You can't make the layup for them. You can, you know, try to do the best job you can to put them in position. First half, I thought we did that. Second half, you know, we, we didn't move the ball as well. Um, you know, we've got to be a little bit... You know, a little bit better there, and we'll take a look at it and see if there's ways that we can help them as a coaching staff and maybe put them in a little bit better position. But, you know, again, I thought the first half we were, we got what we wanted, we just didn't make them. When you're, when you're in a long scoring drought, there was a nearly six minute scoring drought and then a nearly eight minute drought separate from that. What, what is job one offensively during that time? Like, what's the most important thing they need? Well, against them is to take care of the ball. I mean, you got to take care of the ball. You know, I think that's job one for sure. Um, and then, you know, you got to execute. We run different things. You know, I don't want to get into the necessarily the details of it, but guys know exactly what we're looking for on certain things we run, and that's kind of what Tracy was alluding to. we got to have the toughness and the disposition to get what we want and not let an opponent take us out of that. And I thought tonight in the second half that happened too much. Two more questions that we have. Thanks.